Now moving into a couple more of the big guns, if you look at some of those winners on this summary, Tour Duty would have to be right at the top of the list. Again, he's the new number one Dollar W bull. The first, he's actually been number one for Dollar W, but he pushed the bar up even higher. The first bull to go over 105, tremendous birth to yearling spread. Man, I, I'd say probably this fall, he's the bull I've gotten the most questions about. Uh, people want to know about these cattle. Uh, first of all, from a type and kind standpoint, I think they're, they're good structured cattle. They're big footed, they're athletic. The bull himself is a tremendously long body, big volume bull. There's a lot of performance in this cow family. Now, is he going to hold 175 yearling weight? I doubt that. I mean, there's probably, he's going to come back a little bit for growth, probably come back a little bit for birth weight. But I think there's no doubt uh, this is a bull that will transmit a lot of pounds in performance, uh, do it with a reasonable birth weight um, to go along with it. Uh, again, he's moved up into our top five for sales for the fall, and I would expect that to probably continue as we move into the spring. Everybody that sees him, everybody that sees his <clears throat> progeny, they're, they're very impressed, top to bottom. Cool thing is we've got a couple of bulls that fit that mold. Rampage is the other bull. You know, Again, from a total data um, package standpoint, I'd say these two are the big winners in the summary. Uh, similar profiles here. In fact, Rampage now the number one yearling weight bull. He's number one for feedlot merit as well. Big, big ribeye bull, $150 for dollar B. Uh, still at the same time, just like True Duty, I mean, he's a light birth weight bull. It's 14 for CED. I think on both these bulls, again, you'll see as they get more data turned in, they're going to come back a little closer to the mean, uh, but they're cattle, again, that have got a lot of performance. Rampage himself, again, another daybreak son. Um, the thing I like about him, he's, he's so much stouter made than the average daybreak. There, there's more muscle, more masculinity here than the average daybreak. Uh, and again, I think a lot of that's due to the cow family behind him. I know, Ben, you're really familiar with that cow family. I am, Doug, and I've seen a number of projects, mm -hmm. obviously, out of her, and I've seen her, uh, the, the donor female herself, you know, just a really moderate-framed, uh, super deep-bodied uh, kind of cow, built like a tank. I think the one thing that we want to say here too, Doug, is don't overestimate the size of this animal. You know, he himself really is a genuine middle frame kind of bull that uh, right now the data says that maybe he's a, a quite a bit uh, taller and quite a bit more mature size to him. We don't know how he's going to breed, but he is a middle frame kind of bull that, like you say, has a lot of power, a lot of muscle, and a lot of masculinity. Again, we really like that cow family. Uh, we brought in a few other sons. The Firestorm Bull is one of the newest bulls, Ben. He is. Uh, this would be, uh, yeah, one of the most recent out of that cow. Uh, really good protege son. When you look at uh, total <clears throat> spread on his EPDs, when you look at the fact that he's up over one and one on marbling and ribeye both, and, and at, at that 140 benchmark or so on, on dollar B, uh, this bull is it's, uh, he's, he's in and he's making semen. Yeah, exactly. And, and so uh, we're sure excited about uh, bringing on another protege son. Yeah, he's, he's making semen and ready to go. We've got a couple other even newer sons of the bull that have just arrived. So we'll be a few a few days out on having semen available. Uh, two confident sons, Ben. Yeah, and I, I guess I'd talk about them in kind of a concert, Doug, uh, conviction and assurance both at the same time. Uh, you know, the real difference is, you know, the conviction bull does maybe offer a little more growth and a little more dollar B. But I think the talking points really on these two bulls, uh, conviction's probably a little more moderate in his frame, maybe a little more natural rib and, and flank to him. Whereas the assurance bull is going to offer just a little more size. He's going to offer a, a maybe a more attractive kind of a package, maybe a little cleaner, neater made kind of a bull. But all in all, you know, these two bulls could be used side by side in any breeding program, I think, and try to get the best of what uh, what's about to come. And I think when you start to look at, there's a lot of good confident sons out there, but when you look at combined dollar W and dollar B, I think these two bulls really come to the top. Adding adding some additional scrotal to the to the conversation, making sure you have some marbling components to those same conversations and some growth, they bring it all to the table, don't they? Yes. Another young bull that I think brings a lot to the table, and he'll be prominently featured in this next sire directory, is the Baldridge Territory Bull. I mean, you've got a bull that's 12 for CED, over 100 for yearling weight, and 130 for dollar B. Again, brings a little bit of a different pedigree to the party. It does, and, and you know, uh, one of the nice things, too, uh, that cow family, uh, uh, his his dam has had a reputation of making herd bulls. This isn't an anomaly. She's She's done it time and time again out of several different sires. Uh, kind of like that component there. And when you think about uh, the Chisholm cattle, one of the things you'd like to do is give them a little less birth. You'd like to give them uh, a little more uh, marbling and, and end product merit. You'd like to uh, clean them up, make them a little more attractive. And gosh, we just start chucking off all those boxes and, and territory comes right to the top. Yeah. I think this is a super exciting bull. 
I think uh, I think <clears throat> customers are really going to take advantage of a good opportunity here. Again, I think a bull that can be used in a lot of places. Tremendous mating flexibility and creativity there. As we talked earlier about the number one bull in the breed um, for dollar B is Rito 9Q13. Unfortunately, that bull is not producing semen. He is not available at the moment. Uh, but we've got a couple of good sons, and I think one that's really different here in, in the partner bull, especially from a Cavanee standpoint. Yeah, you had uh, you had a, a 9Q13 here with a uh, uh, 13 Cavanees direct dug, and then still get the advantage of all the all the uh, marbling and ribeye and carcass weight components. Uh, uh, you know, I think this is a pretty uh, pretty neat, and pretty uh, pretty interesting uh, new addition to to the lineup. You know, 146 dollar B bull. And then you actually add uh, Daybreak on the bottom side and start bringing yeah. some of that Circle A Alliance information into the into the picture. This is this can be pretty interesting. Uh, we talked about the number one dollar B bull. We also have the number three dollar B bull and the Journey bull from Origin. Uh, the nice thing about him is he's not just a high dollar B bull. Look at the birth to yearling spread. Look at the calving ease here. Uh, look at the docility and the heifer pregnancy to go along with it. This is a bull that you know we'll get a new photo of him I think as we get green grass here in the spring. Uh, but a bull that will get a lot of attention with that dollar B package, that strong curb bender package that he offers as well. A little different bull here, moving into just a few power bulls to finish up. Southside, again, another brand new addition to the lineup. He's just arrived at the stud. We're still, again, probably about 45 days away from him being available. But this is a bull, I think, that's really starting to gain some people's attention. Yes, he is. Uh, when you think about uh, the, the uh, good side, the good things out of K2, or extra K205, when you think about the structure and the maternal and some things like that, you take a bull like this, he's going to add some size and some stretch to some cattle. A phenomenal kind of growth pattern to him. Mm -hmm. Out in Virginia, these cattle were very, very well received in a recent sale. Uh, the, they were they were towards the very top end across the board in terms of that sire group. This uh, this bull, I think, has a tremendous future. And we'll finish up with Upriver. This is another bull that's got his first calf drop. We've got birth and weaning data. You know, as we've described this bull, he's a man amongst boys, and his progeny are performing the same way, and that didn't surprise us in terms of the performance that the cattle have. But I think we really have been pleasantly surprised at the birth weight on this bull. Uh, he started out in the mid-three-pound range. Those first calves have moved him all the way down to a plus 1.7. They've improved his cavities to plus 8. Uh, this was going to be a high-demand impact bull for us, I think, just from a growth and power standpoint. But as that birth weight has moved down, um, I think he could be a big player for us across the board as we move into the spring. Well, that was a, a semi-brief overview, I think, of some of the highlight Angus bulls that will be in the spring uh, sire directory. Again, we're working on putting that piece together this week. There's a lot more bulls. As you start to look at the list, we really did try to whittle it down a little bit this morning. A tremendous lineup, I think, not just across the Angus breed, but across several breeds. Uh, again, we're looking forward to an exciting spring. I uh, hope that you are, too.